All right, man, I'm going to tell you on the front end, I did not get a chance to turn my cell phone off. If one of my kids calls me right now, it may ring. I, uh, I had to get a new one, and I have not quite figured out how to do this thing yet. So just let me assure you that I, I, I can, I know how to turn it off, but I, I but it may ring. So, uh, and, and I want my kids to call me anytime they want to call me. So, all right, now, that out of the way. Great, what a great introduction. Uh, Gray and I go back a long way, and I'm putting it over here. Um, Gray and I go back a long way, and we're great friends, and we have uh, had a great friendship, and he has done a great job for the Democratic Party. I mean, a really great job for the Democratic Party. He has really dedicated himself to helping us put together what we need to do in Tennessee for the working families in this state. And Gray, you just need a big round of applause because I know how hard he works every day. John, you and Diane, thank you. Y'all are, are nice to help put this together. Uh, very nice to put this together. I, uh, I, 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 it, 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 you just done a great job of getting this group together. Andy, you and Monica, and I had not gotten to meet Monica until tonight. I've seen too much of Andy because I, I've been out campaigning with him and going around, but I had not gotten a chance to meet Monica tonight. He obviously has really good judgment. He is married very well. So I'm, I'm really proud of him. He's, he's done well. And so Andy, congratulations. You've, uh, you, you made a major, major accomplishment right here with Monica. I want to tell y'all, uh, as I've moved around the room, and I'm not going to take too much time, Roy's going to come after me, but I'm, uh, that light's awfully bright, but I'm, uh, uh, Roy's going to come after me, uh, and you know, Roy and I are both from Dresden, Tennessee, and I've got a fundraiser in Chicago uh, tomorrow morning, and so I'm going to slip out. So Roy, I don't know where you are, but I want to go ahead and tell y'all right now, I'm going to slip out while, while I can, because I don't want y'all to think that I, I'm a slippery kind of person. I, I want you to know I'm where I am and that I do the right thing. So Roy, where are you? Okay, all right. All right, Roy, I'm going to slip out while you're talking. And, and, uh, and we're both in Dresden. We live on the same block in Dresden. And, uh, and, and, and let me assure you, Roy will have some great comments for you, and, uh, as he always does, because he's very knowledgeable and he knows a lot about state government. I've had a lot of y'all ask me about my dad. As a matter of fact, I think everybody has asked me about my dad. So let me just say this. About three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, my son is just now turning 16. And, and I've been working with him to buy a car, and Dad knows that. And my son's sort of a pickup truck kind of guy. And I find out that my dad has bought a yellow Thunderbird convertible. Now, can y'all imagine Ned McWhorter in a yellow Thunderbird convertible? I mean, it is beyond my imagination. And so I called him and I said, Dad, did you buy this car with Walker and mine? And he said, no, Mike, that's your responsibility. I bought this car for myself. So I think he's enjoying life. And I think that, and I think that it actually exemplifies it. So he's doing well. You know, one of the most rewarding experiences in my life have been afternoons and evenings like this. In 1985, I got a chance to travel across the whole state of Tennessee and visit all 95 counties. And I know Jim Hall, and I can't see him, but I know Jim Hall is out here somewhere in his crowd. And there's nobody who is more important to my father because he managed that campaign and made that happen. So Jim, I can't see you, but I know you're out here, and, and, and you're a dear friend, and you, and you always will be. It was a privilege for me to be welcomed and to be able to talk to the people of Tennessee, to be able to go out across the state. As some of you know now, 
I'm at it again. I'm traveling the state, and I want to listen to what, this, what the voters want to say. And what I'm hearing is a real frustration, not only in East Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, West Tennessee. I'm hearing that people are frustrated all across the state. They're looking for change. And I don't blame them because I'm looking for change too. I'm frustrated and I'm angry with what's happened in Washington. I've seen, as you have, this war in Iraq go on and on. We started on a mission to eliminate terrorism. And I completely agree with what they did in Afghanistan because Osama bin Laden attacked us. But now we've gotten into the middle of a civil war in Iraq. And I don't think that's the right thing to do. And I really don't think there's any accountability in Washington, D.C. Do y'all, does anybody think there's accountability there? No. I've seen, as you have, the immigration problem only grow worse. Our borders are not secure. Our ports are not secure. And it's frankly scary to me. Illegals are flooding into this community, and they're doing it every day, and they're getting jobs from employers who aren't paying the price. They're rewarded, frankly, for breaking the law. And that's not right. I felt, like many of you, the problems with health care. Because I have a lot of people that work with me, and we have to work on a daily basis about our health care issues for their families. We've got a wonderful health care situation in America. But we don't really have a policy that is working for us now. I've seen, as you have, this Republican leadership get out there and take us from a point of financial responsibility to a point where we've accumulated more debt than we have ever uh, accumulated as this, uh, than you we have ever accumulated ever before with all 41 presidents before that. And I've got to tell you, that's what really bothers me. I want my children, and one of them just called me right now, and I'm going to get back on the phone with him in just a second. I want my children to have the future in this country and the same opportunities that I've had that have been provided to me. But if we continue down this path, that they've done in Washington of irresponsible spending with politicians who can't say no, our country is going to be made right. And I don't want to leave y'all with a negative, negative ne message by any means, but unless we change the direction we're headed in, our children's future cannot be nearly as bright as the opportunity is I had. You know, I think the bottom line and what scares me about this is I think our government is mortgaging the future of our children to the Chinese and to the Japanese. They're the person who are holding our debt, and that's the people who my children are going to be working for and pay interest payments for if we don't change our direction. 